I'm basically earth, but just a bit sticky. I was taken from the ground and milled in Stoke-on-Trent into usable clay. My neighbours were all different. Some were strong and gritty, some groggy, some red and some white porcelain. I was bog standard. Somewhere in between, I like to think. But I knew I was smooth and silky. I was bagged and labelled. Smooth, buff. Yes, I like those words. I can live with that. I was transported with some buff mates on a pallet. There were a ton of us. We jogged about in our curtain side lorry. We had a bit of a bumpy ride and some of us fell off the pile on the way. The driver was very angry as he had to physically handle us off the lorry rather than on his pallet truck. This woman was there and she tried to lighten the mood but he was having none of it. I stayed in my bag for a while, nestled up with my travelling companions. I was on the top though. It was a warm bright studio, we were by the window and it was nice. Then the woman picked me up. Time to shine. All the attention was on me suddenly. I was made superbly tall by these aluminium supports which I clung to. It was easy. I moved about a bit, made some shapes. It was all very quick. She was happy. It was quiet. We had a nice time together. At the end of the day, my fluidity was maintained by being sprayed with lovely cool water and wrapped back up in my plastic. She always seemed to work in the window, in the sun. It was lovely, but it did make me feel dry. Sometimes I even cracked, but she would keep spraying me and I was okay. She would keep taking bits off me, off and then on again, really quick until things started to slow down a bit and she would leave me for long periods of the day and she would sweep back in, staring at me intensely. I was meticulously photographed. I was wrapped up, unwrapped, wrapped, unwrapped, and then one day there seemed to be a tension developing. I was turned round and round. I could see other shapes under the plastic all about the place. I think they were made out of my mates from the lorry. But there was this stuff that looked like metal. It kind of looked like us, but made of metal. Just as I was trying to work it out, I was put in the back of a van. It was a very shocking experience, swept off my pedestal like that, and the van wobbled about. I arrived at a much bigger place, then had bright pink rubber poured all over me, layer and layers of the stuff. It went hard. No, not hard, it was soft. Then over that, they put a very small, harder jacket. It was tight and claustrophobic. It seemed to keep the soft bit next to me in one place. The hard jacket was in a few pieces and they had to make holes in it when it was set. Hang on, I thought that was me put to bed. They opened up the resin jacket and pulled out off the pink stuff. A few bits of me fell off. But worse was to come. I am shoved in a bucket with other bits of clay apparently and they will reuse me. Hmm. Hang on, now I'm over here. I'm in a big vat of bubbling green wax. I'm brushed into the opposite of where I once was when I was clay. Amazing. All the tiny details of my former self have been picked up by the pink rubber stuff. I am reforming into my clay creation, but I am now wax. I'm being filled with more hot wax. I am solid wax. Then, as it's cooling, it's being poured out again. It's okay, there's still a thickness of me with all the detail. Phew. But I think I'm going to be hollow. I hope that's okay. They undo the bolts and pull off the pink stuff again. Nothing of me fell off this time though, which is good. So I'm again out of my rubber and resin jacket. It was a bit tight. Apparently my sides leaked where, where the mould joined, so they tidied me up by heating up knives in the fire and melting my misshapen bits. Now they put me in the cold cupboard in the dark. I'm waiting for something. I can tell. Who is that woman that created me? She's fondling and looking at me again, doing that turning me around and around thing again. She's covering me in black stuff to check I haven't changed. I don't think I have, but she's very particular. 
I get the all clear, whatever that means. I'm back in the cupboard. It's dark and cold. Apparently I will melt or change if I'm allowed out. I'll just wait here. Back in the wobbly van thing. I'm off to Wales. Ah, oh, that sounds fun. It's a very bendy road and we swing about a bit. We're all nestled in bubbly plastic which seems to stop us bumping into each other. As we park up I can hear birds and sheep but there's also a very big factory noise. I'm starting to feel a little bit anxious about that big factory noise. I'm back in the wax room. Similar to before, fans are going, bats are melting and knives are being stuck in the fire again. I go to a desk where they stick big struts all over me. They seem to join up into what looks like branches. I'm now upside down and they're attaching what looks like a solid wax cup to the top. Now I'm the right way round and I've been stood in a cold room again. It's dark again. I think everyone's gone home. I can hear the fans starting up. People are making tea. I'm off again. I've gone into a very white room now. Vats of other stuff are whirring away in here and there are rows of hooks. I'm getting a bit anxious again. I'm being brushed over with white liquid stuff, but it's nice. They're being very careful with me, so I'm very fragile at the moment. I'm being hung up, but it's okay. A big fan is blowing me dry. Phew. Actually, not phew. Just as I got dry, I was put headfirst into a big vat of white liquid. It feels like clay again somehow. It's nice. But then I'm out, hung up. Here's the fans. Back down. Dunked. Up. Down. Dried. This seems to go on for days. Is this my life now? Apparently not. I'm off outside somewhere. Oh my god, they're putting me in this massive metal chamber. There's a goddamn fire under it. I'm melting. I've melted and run back into the big vat of bubbling wax again. Apparently they will reuse me. This is confusing me. Maybe it's all over. I remember this from before. My form is still on the inside of that white stuff, that ceramic shell stuff, like it was with the pink rubber stuff. Guess I will chill out here, all inside out like. I did get very hot indeed in there, and they kind of burnt me, if I'm honest. So when they fill me back up with water, I'm relieved. But it's been poured out. Turns out they're only measuring how much they needed in the crucible. Sounds like a scary word. I've no idea what's coming next. It's very noisy. There is an enormous fan going on. People are getting dressed in very big clothes and boots and masks. There's a lot of heat. Ingots are being put into some sort of cauldron thing. It's all getting very scary. I'll just wait. I am sure they know what they're doing. Off I go. I'm upside down again. I'm surrounded by some other folk. I can't see who they are as they're all inside out like me and covered in jackets. We're all being put in an enormous upside down cylinder and covered in sand. Only our little cups covered in tin foil are poking out. There seems to be a bit of looking at the cauldron thing, which is full of inordinately, <laughs> I can't even say it, inordinately hot red liquid. Oh my lordy, what the hell is that? Suddenly the crane lifts up the crucible. It's absolutely massive. And suddenly with a tilt of the thing, I'm being filled with the hottest stuff in the world. It's those ingots, the bronze. They've only gone and melted them with the big blower thing and poured them in my inside out ceramic form. Blimey. We're all still together and a bit hot still. But yes, it's okay. We have become solid. We're cooling rapidly. I'm feeling settled now in my ceramic jacket and soft, warm sand. Relax. But there's no rest. They're removing the cylinder with another scary crane. My warm bedding is slipping away. I'm out, onto the floor. I can hear shovels nearby echoing through the concrete. Scrape, scrape. Now I'm being hit with a massive hammer. I lose my jacket. But it's actually okay. 
a lot for naked me. I'm still covered in the big tree-like structure in my cup, but I'm feeling good hanging out with a couple of similar folk in a pile of old jackets. Will this never end? I am now being taken to a massive room and the man has covered himself head to toe in protection. The room is sealed. It's not looking good for me. I'm being fired at with an incredible amount of air and worse still, it seems to have tiny harsh particles in it that tickles. No, that more than tickles. It goes on for some time getting onto all my grooves and removing any remnants of that white jacket. It's surely gone now. Please stop. The loud whooshing noise stops, but there's no quiet to be had. He's now coming at me with a machine with a big disc that goes round at an enormous speed. You could do damage with that thing. Damage to me, even. Yes, that's what he's going to do. I'm separated from my tree light structure and my cup. But again, I actually feel good. I'm lighter. More the real me. I seem to have these marks all over me though. I've lost my scarf too. I thought I had a scarf before. I'm being sent off in another van. More wobbling about. The sheep noises are quietening. I think we're on a motorway now. I hope they remember I had a scarf. I'm now on a trolley with some other folk. I can see what's going on from here. I sit here until it's my turn to go up on that desk where there's another bright light torch thing and more worry things. Here we go. They're cleaning up my weird marks where my tree was. Oh, brilliant. Here's my scarf. Hello, scarf. What fun we will have. I think. Here's that woman again. That's weird. She keeps popping up. I've been through all sorts of things. I wonder if she realises what's happened to me. If, if she realises what I've been through. I feel a bit let down by her, to be honest. I thought we were friends. Here she goes again, staring at me. Staring, staring, checking, checking. It's all she does. And she is so fussy. Yes, I may have changed a minuscule amount. I'm sorry, but you should see what they did to me. It's absolutely incredible I look anything remotely similar to as I did when you sent me off like that. Well, apparently I need some more tweaking. She's starting to irritate me now, but apparently I just have to look perfect. Just, uh, just as I was all that time ago in the studio, in the sun. Oh, I remember now, it was lovely. I was gorgeous, wasn't I? You're right. Make me as I was. Friends? My God, she's gone again. Ugh. I'm left alone with these crazies and their machines. Now another one has got a massive hot blowy gun thing and a brush. You guessed it, he is coming for me now. He is warming sections of me up and then he's dabbing on chemicals. Who, who knows what's in those beakers? It looks lethal. He carries on. He goes all over me. He makes my scarf look beautiful. But he gets irritated when it wobbles about a lot, when he dabs it with his brush. I can't keep it still. It's just too big. It makes me giggle a bit as it wobbles and wobbles and he dabs and dabs with his brush. He has a bit of an insecurity about whether my colour is right, but he knows what he's doing. He's done it for years. He's a real expert. So that's good. The same guy covers me in wax while I'm still warm. Then I get put in the office with the computers where it's clean. Maybe it's all over. Oh no, here's that woman again. She's come back to check me again surely after all this I must be perfect I am back in the wobbly van but in blankets this time out of the van out of my blankets I'm going into a big open green space bigger than I have ever seen in my life apparently it's called a garden the noises I heard in Wales I can see them now they're birds and they're everywhere, flying about. Yes, they're flying about. In the trees. It's incredible out here. I can feel the breeze. Look at the sky. The flowers. I can see now the woman wanted to make me to show people how beautiful the world is. To 
show people how be beautiful it feels to be free, to be alive. The woman is explaining something to the people who seem to belong to the garden. Am I going to live here? It's beautiful. 